Hey guys, it's Eric from Generic Expats here in Cartagena in August of 2024. Back in 2023 in December, as I was going through Central America, I bumped into a new person that was a YouTuber named Scott Allen Miller, who I interviewed. And actually, we had such a good connection. We chatted for so long. It actually turned into a four-part series. So today, I'm showing you part three of Scott Allen Miller chatting a bit about being a, an expat in Nicaragua, also making a business, and how he ended up making his channel in the end. I've spent the past year and a half driving my motorcycle through Latin America, living in each country for a minimum of six weeks. This has been one of the most difficult projects I've ever embarked upon, and I really hope you enjoy all this content coming at you now. Scene change number, I don't know, because we are now in a different location. This is actually a business that you are running right now, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Could you give a summary of what we were talking about? Yeah, so uh, for a lot of people, visas may not make sense. You may just want to be on a tourist visa and not worry about residency, like the long-term stuff. But for those who are going to do it, it often takes many years. It's To be five to seven years is actually reasonable uh, for that to happen. So that feeling that people have that you got to do it real fast doesn't really apply in most cases. Just to give you my own anecdote, I lived five years on pure tourist visas in Vietnam. So this is something that doing visa runs is very common in many countries, not just Nicaragua, not just in all of Latin America, in Asia as well, and probably Africa. I think Europe maybe is a kind of a difficult one because it's a, it's a regional area yep. with the Schengen, Schengen, Schengen. Schengen which yep. this is actually part of a region as well. But luckily, you're, we're next to Costa Rica, so you can yes. do that if you want. Changing topics from the visa, let's talk about what you're doing here. You have a YouTube channel. Can you talk a little bit about your YouTube channel? Sure. So I started as a traveler, right? Living abroad, I started doing a YouTube channel uh, because I had I'd actually had a blog before that. And I used to write every day, basically like a journal for my father, because it was he, the way to keep up with him as I traveled. And over time, I got tired of doing that after like 18 years. And I said, you know what? I want to do something a little bit different. I want to do a little bit of video thing for him. So I started in like 2017, 2018, doing more or less a daily video for my father. Um, and over time, I built up a couple couple followers. And then when we moved to Nicaragua, it was like, ah, this is going to be a lot more interesting. I'm going to put a little bit more effort into it. But then I got really busy. Like, it did. you moved. Like, a bunch of stuff's going on. So it, it wasn't that complete. Um, but after maybe about nine months. I'm like, okay, I really got to get into this. I got to do it every day. This is my communications with my dad, my friends, a lot of people back home. Um, and then it took me a little while. And, and after a few months, I discovered that there was a lot of people who were really like writing to me and, and I was getting a lot of followers that they're like, I'm really interested in this stuff about Nicaragua. There's no information out there. And I'd known there was no information because when we had lived uh, during COVID in the United States, we kept trying to research Nicaragua and there just wasn't anything good. Uh, what little bit was disappeared. It was just very anemic as far as content down here, even old content, like current during COVID, of, of course, a lot of things are tough. And so it was like, there's so much to show, so much we'd like to share with people, friends and family, but also people who are interested in learning more. This could be really valuable. And it's not a big country, so it's easy to go around and show a lot of things. So I tried to start showing a little bit more and, and I really just suddenly got a lot of interest that I was not expecting. I thought maybe we would have this show that a few people followed, right? But then suddenly we were getting thousands of followers and it was like a big thing and I was getting written to, you know, every few minutes and like it was, it was really active. I'm like, oh, okay, this is valuable. And I talked to a lot of people and they're like, no, this is something important and it's making a difference. And so many people have come to me and said, I moved to the country because of your show. And like we're sitting here, the hotel that's next to us, the owner said, I moved here because of your show. Like I found this, I got this information, it made me feel confident, it gave me a completely different idea of what areas to go to and what I might be interested in. Give me a bunch of, like and so that kind of just became this this kind of organic fell into it, never had a big plan around it. That's why the name of the show is so dumb. That's a gratifying feeling though, isn't it? If someone tells you your content, what you make is like helping me and then you can see something physically that happened and help someone. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been very cool. So what is the name of your channel? By the way, you just mentioned it has a silly name. What is the name? So the name is just the Scott Allen Miller vlog because it was meant to just be, I'm Scott Allen Miller and it's my vlog. Like that seemed logical at the time because <laughs> it was just my vlog from my dad. It didn't need a special name. It didn't need anything. And it was, so I, I've, technically made it like that's its name at Scott Allen Miller vlog and it's Scott Allen Miller's living in Nicaragua is like the the name that shows up so at least you can be like okay he's living in Nicaragua but I like to travel and I like, like I just did Bolivia I did a bunch of content in Bolivia I did Guatemala last year and tried to do similar content in, in other regions 
uh, and partially because we have all, like my offices are in Bolivia. So I have a lot of contacts. I, I'm very involved in Bolivia. Um, so I have some useful information, uh, kind of like I have here, not to the same extent, of course. Um, but it's uh, uh, there was never like a marketing effort to come up with something that made sense. And <laughs> once it was so entrenched, it's like I, I can't change it. Um, but so I've branched out then since then, um, as, as we talked about before we started the video that um, I have like Nicaragua 360 is a channel where I just do 360 degree because I have a 360 camera. It's so neat to be able to see Nicaragua in that way or any place really. But um, I think a lot of times when people are looking at Nicaragua, like on my videos, there's a lot of, oh, hey, he's showing the camera in this way, but what's off camera? And a 360 camera, if you've never used one, um, if you do a full 360 and you're on like YouTube or whatever, you can just scroll and look up, down, all around. It's amazing. And, um, you, you know, a lot of people use 360 cameras to frame other things. So you don't see that. But if you're actually making a 360 channel like that, every video I have on there, I'll, I'll go to a beach. You can look at every house. You can look at the beach. You can look at the sky, whatever. <laughs> and you really, you're, you're a part of the place. Um, and then we have a more recent one that I'm working with, Nika Roomba, which is a project we have here. It's actually NikaRoomba.com. Uh, and it is a website for uh, like musical events and, and cultural events and things like that around mm -hmm. the country. Um, but so we have a channel that I do some work on. Hopefully more people are going to be working on it with me. Uh, but we actually film concerts and stuff and do like two hour long concert videos um, so that people who want to get a feeling of what Nicaragua music or nightlife is like, you can go see. And a lot of times, you know, we get the audience, too. So you're seeing people partying and dancing and like what the bands are like and what real nights out are like here in Leon, especially. But we do it other places, too. And uh, awesome. so that's been really cool. Yeah, I've seen you have many channels, and it seems like you like focusing on different topics for each one, which is great. People can check that out and say, oh, this is specifically for that. Great. I like this. And yeah, it's good. Uh, let's talk a little bit more specifically about that channel The Scott Miller is living in Nicaragua. What are your main topics that you cover in this channel? Um, I try to cover kind of everything. I cover a bit of like, this is my life in Nicaragua. Like, this is what I'm experiencing, which I, I think is important because people need to get a vibe of like what what would actually living there potentially be like um but i cover a lot of like real estate stuff because there's a, so many people out there trying to push you got to come buy real estate you got to come buy real estate and there there are opportunities here but but come on the average person shouldn't be just buying a house in a foreign country maybe come down spend a couple of years and 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 then be aware that the processes aren't like you think other places so there's a lot of like warning people don't don't just assume it works this way or that way um prices are way lower than you think don't don't look at something that's half the price of the U.S. and think it's a good deal. It's probably double the price it really is. That kind of stuff. Um, I do a lot of touring around the country, a lot of walking the streets, and a lot of times in barrios. So, uh, for example, I did um, Esteli, one of the, the cities up north. And it doesn't get a lot of footage shot of it. And what little bit is shot of it, you know, it's Central Park. It's the cathedral. It's maybe the, the, the baseball stadium, the soccer stadium, sorry, up there. And we're baseball down here. It's, each city has their own sport. And, um, uh, and that's all you see. And I walk through a lot of the smaller barrios and go through like real neighborhoods and show like here's actual houses where normal Nicaraguans live. Um, and it's important because it gives you a feel like, OK, this isn't just touristy Nicaragua, it's real Nicaragua. But it's also proven to be incredibly valuable because so many people are just assume that it's dangerous here. And then I walk through some really poor areas and really remote, really small little barrios way out. And people will be like, wait, you're walking around alone with a camera. For hours at a time, there's no editing. There's no, this is real life. You're safe walking around. And then I've done Managua, like huge swaths of Managua. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that everyone should go walk around Managua alone. <laughs> with expensive with cameras camera. by yourself. Right. There, there's limits. I want to show that it could have been safe. I'm not saying you should do it. Right. Um, I'm a big guy. I'm confident. Uh, people know me. I, I do know how to get the police if I need them. Like I'm a little bit safer than an average person. Um, so, so be normal, be cautious. But... It's an incredibly safe country with all these things to see. And uh, it's, um, it, it's important that people get to see that view of what this country is like because there's just so much they'll never see somewhere else. And, and a lot of Nicaraguans have come up to me and said, there's nothing about our country. Like nobody has seen this. Um, and a lot of Nicaraguans who've moved away have contacted me and been like, this is crazy. So I grew up on this street. And I watch your show. You walked past my childhood home, <laughs> and and you're the only one that even has ever come close to it. Like it's such a different experience. 
Uh, and so that, that's been very cool. That's great. That sounds like a lot of good information. And you give like stuff about real estate, about living in Nicaragua. Obviously, it's the name of your channel. But you, I've watched your videos. And I think that some of your content, the stuff that <laughs> <there's a guy. laughs> he's dropping some lines. No, no, no worries. Um, the, uh, the content you give and the perspective you give, the, the in-depth uh, viewpoint you have is really good. I really suggest you guys all check out some of his videos. They're really helpful. Stuff that I what, didn't even know I watched. And I was like, oh, yeah, and I travel like literally nonstop and have been for 15 years. So that, this is great to see his, his, his video content and his perspective. Now, besides your YouTube channel, you also have a, a business here, right? You do, do other projects. So we do a number of projects. Um, we have a hospitality management firm. Um, which, you know, we came down, it, we kind of fell into it. Like I said, it was not this like huge plan of this is what we wanted to do. But with the first place where we thought it was going to be our house and then we were like, oh, we need to. So we, we partnered um, with some some locals actually who uh, have a lot of experience in hospitality and and we have always really liked the idea of doing that. And, and this is our long term home, right? So this is an important part of that aspect. We know that we want to live here, not just in Nicaragua, but the Leon zone and specifically these beaches. Um, that means we have a long-term desire for the beaches to be the places we want to live. So we don't want businesses to fail. We don't want there to be a lack of, of things here. Um, and so creating jobs, um, helping to promote the beaches is very important for us. Uh, so we got involved in a new uh, hospitality management group that's working here and expanding in the country. Like this is young, um, but going and, and we're sitting here in a newly opened property that, that we're helping to manage. And um, so that's been... A major piece of what we're doing here we also have our work in the u.s so we're, we're still busy with that that keeps us busy most of the time um but between my channel and and working in hospitality businesses here it's been so i don't think people can actually see because i set up the camera at a specific angle we're actually sitting on the edge of an empty pool and my camera is in the middle of this pool <laughs> this is the property you guys what do you think you'll be finished uh developing and have this property available Oh my gosh, I don't really know. Um, it's gonna be a few months yet. Mm. So the restaurant behind this wall, uh, technically soft opened last night um, and it's just reopened for the day today. So we're just seeing the first people walk in uh, for the day. Um, and it's only been under a month since we began work on revitalizing this property. This is one that, um, a, it had been a previous restaurant. It was an Argentinian smokehouse here in Las Pinitas and um, it, it had been a beautiful property. It was set up by a chef from Canada and um, it had it failed in 2018, so it's been closed for a long time. We've been looking at it and, and the right opportunity came up that it made sense for, uh, for the company that we, for Dos Oceanos, uh, the management company, and um, we managed to get in. We've had less than a month because we needed to be open for the holidays. And for those who don't know, it's yesterday was a holiday here, like and today, big one. So needed to be open so there was some like getting attention and stuff or you miss the high season and you miss it. Uh, so it was a mad rush. Um, the pool and stuff, this is going to be, we're kind of hopeful that by the end of the year, it may actually be open. But realistically, I think uh, January, February. Okay, awesome. So what is the name of this uh, restaurant that you just did the soft opening for yesterday? So this is Desperados. Desperados. And the holiday he mentioned before, actually the reason why I am here now, he suggested that I check out what is the holiday in Leon. The big, it's the biggest festival in the year in, in that city, right? Mm -hmm.